I'll be talking a lot about nutrition, movement, and the way we think. Eat, move, meditate. And this is, this is not just because they're popular. There's good reason why each of them is fairly popular. But it's, and it's also not just because I, I really like these, but there is some profound, um, there are some profound reasons why these are just so important on our pursuit to mastering uh, the health of our future self. There's many three reasons, massive reasons, why it's so important that we, ne- that, that we completely master these three domains of our behavior. And before I explain to you why, let's just take a step back for a moment and think about what is health. And health is, is determined by what we express with our genes over time. You know, we've discovered our genes half a century ago, just more than, and we saw how central they are to what we become over time. And we misunderstood that insight and we now, then we thought they were the cause of our health. But they just play a very central role. It's the input, the signals, the cues that we give our genes that actually control how they express themselves. And there is a broad spectrum of possibility from which our, or of which our genes can express. And this is the process of epigenetics. This is the understanding that the signals, the cues, the inputs from the moment of our conception start to determine how we express our genes. And this seems to be more important than what our genetic blueprint default is. There's so much possibility within each of our uh, genomes that we can express such a wide range of possibilities of, of health, physicality, mentality, that what we stimulate to be expressed is more important that than what was predetermined. So it's this process of becoming, which is the process that we develop health or disease, the accumulation of inputs and responses, inputs and responses at which the core could be considered to be our our genes. Now, what makes these three, eat, move, meditate, or nutrition movement and the way we think, so important is because they're slightly different to what a lot of the other inputs are. If you think of, well, let's go with why. First of all, these three behaviors are extremely far-reaching in their effects. Almost every structure and system in our body is regulated, affected, controlled in some way, directly or indirectly, by the way we eat, the way we move, and the way we think. So they are far-reaching. These are huge potentials. Like if we, if we ignore them and they become harmful, they're going to have drastically damaging effects. But if we master them, then there's huge potential for far-reaching benefits. So their pervasiveness, their wide, system-wide reach. This is the reason, number one, why these three are so important. And then the second reason why these have to be taken seriously by all of us is because their effects are inescapable. There is no pausing this process. There is no um, avoiding the effects of our nourishment, of our movement, and of the way we think. We have to eat. We have to nourish ourselves. And so, and that process, which we're discovering more and more, it's not just fuel in energy and exhaust like a machine. 
all of that matter and energy shapes us as we consume it, digest it, and use it. So whatever we're eating is becoming us, determining what we become, shaping our genetic expression, nutrigenomics, massively expanding understanding of the impact that food has on our body recently. So we have to eat, and it's shaping us. If we haven't optimized it, it's probably harming us. Same with our movement. We can never pause the impact that our movement is having on our genetic expression. If we're not moving, then we're adapting towards not moving. If we're moving or exploring the youthfulness of our movement possibilities, then we are going to develop in a direction with youthful movement possibilities. If we are moving poorly or unconsciously in a way that damages our joints and our structures, then we are going to reinforce and develop movement which is degrading to our physical structure. If we are moving in a way that is vital, efficient, economical, health-giving, then we are going to become that. We, before I finish that, and also from a way that we think, we, are, we can never escape the way or the, the effects of our psychology. If we are experiencing psychological serenity, then we reinforce a serene psychology. If we, if we experience or subject ourselves to lots of anger, then we are going to develop in the direction of experiencing being more susceptible to anger. Whatever state of mind we are experiencing leads us towards experiencing more of that state of mind. We cultivate that part of ourselves each moment. We are a process that is continuously becoming what we do. Therefore, we need to do what it is we wish to become. And there is no avoiding this. As long as we are alive, we are becoming what we do. So it's inescapable. And the chances are, especially in our highly unnatural modern environment, that if we haven't optimized any one of these domains of our behavior, then it's highly likely that it's damaging, that it's damaging us. So that's number two, inescapable. Either it's working for us, or it's working against us. We have to take it seriously. But now, point number three. The third reason why these three elements are so important. Is because out of all of the many inputs that determine or shape our genetic expression, these three are the most controllable. These three, in fact, we have the potential to completely control these three aspects of our behavior. If we consider the myriad, the wide spectrum of things, of inputs, of signals, of experiences, of situations that affect our genetic expression and determine who and what we become over time. Where we have the opportunity to control them, we must, because there is so much that we don't, that we can't. And to just paint a bit of a picture, um, perhaps our, from the minute our mother and father's DNA is combined in that through just post-conception, and now that new genetic sequence is starting to experience and receive signals from its environments. What state of physiology was your mother in? What state of stress? What health? What was her metabolic condition in? Was she depressed? Was her system toxic? 
These are all things and every moment through the pregnancy. And we know how profoundly impactful those times of our development are. You know, we just have to think of what pregnant mothers have to give up because of those impacts on the development of a child will shape its entire life. But those are just the overtly clinically concerning things that a mother gives up. But every other thing that she exposes the child to, her child to, determines a big aspect of its development. Whether it was a natural birth or a C-section, whether we were exposed to our mother's vaginal uh, biome, what we experienced and how we were conditioned by the emotional relationship between our parents. In fact, a big, a big aspect is the birthing process and how that shapes us traumatically. So, you know, and then there's many things in our life situation now, which let's call it a stressful work situation or toxic living conditions or perhaps access to certain kinds of foods are difficult. Whatever environmental conditions are outside of our control, we have to be making up for it as much as we possibly can with what we can control. And this is how, as far as we reasonably can, nourish ourselves properly. And this includes nourishment just as a short one. I will do a whole other video on what it means to nourish ourselves. But this is everything that we absorb that becomes us. From, from providing ourselves with oxygen through our lungs, from what we put on our skin and absorb through this protective layer, of course, including what we eat, what we drink, and the substances in the air. This is all nourishment of our environment, materially, structurally, and uh, energetically, you know, the energy con constitution of it becoming us. This is the flow of nature into us and becoming us. The quality of that, which is continuously happening and shaping us, that needs to be mastered. These three domains are so powerful that if we do not optimize even one of them as much as we can, there is a gaping hole in our health potential. However, if we combine all three of them and optimize them as best as we can, simultaneously, this opens up a new world of possibility for healing and vitality. So I hope I've been able to, these are my thoughts, these are my ideas, and these. this is why I I don't, I, I, to me, I just, I can't see a way for us to master our health without completely committing to the, the maximum optimization of all three of those. How we master our thinking, how we master our eating, how we master our movement. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear if that makes sense. Or if you've thought about it differently. Thank you for watching this video. Lots more to come. Subscribe and share. That'll help a lot.